I've never caught a salmon fresh from Celilo Falls. The salmon we eat lives at the supermarket, wrapped in paper and stand for the price tag. I thought of Celilo Falls as kind of a legend, a body of water that no longer exists. Extinct. The pulsing waters flooded out into an abrupt and empty stillness. To be honest, I didn't think about it much. Until one day when Warm Springs artist Lillian Pitt came and shared the story of Celilo Falls with us. While she spoke, she showed us how to build masks resembling the stick Indian with his whistling mouth. From the flat clay, she pulled a long nose bridge and smoothed out the broad cheekbones. She added texture with pine cones and shells she collected on walks. Her people lived near Celilo Falls for many thousands of years and fished for salmon that fought their way up the powerful current. The salmon flowed in abundance. The people of the river hung the fish on racks where it dried in under a day in the gusting east wind. Once the salmon was dry, they packed up 90 pounds of it into corn husk bags for trade. That's a lot of salmon, and that's how wealthy they were. Celilo Falls was a great gathering place where people would come to trade for dried salmon. They came from the east to trade their buffalo hides, and from far north as Alaska to trade their wooden tools and beautiful carvings. And they did this for thousands and thousands of years. Until 1952 when construction of the Dalles Dam began. The dam was built to harness the powerful current of the Columbia River and turn it into electricity. Despite protests by several tribal councils, the government chose to build the dam, breaking the treaties that protected the people's fishing rights. And so the government gave the people of the river a little bit of money and flooded Celilo Falls. Lillian told us how sad the people were on the day that the falls disappeared. Chief Tommy Thompson of the YM tribe stood over and watched it. He wouldn't let the children watch because he didn't want them to remember such a sad event. And so they all sang in mourning as the falls began to drown. As we listened to Lillian's story, I wondered when and why people stopped respecting such a place. I can only imagine what the roaring water must have sounded like as it plunged down the rocks, immersing the fishermen in clouds of mist. Was there any consideration for the people whose ancestors had been living there for all those years? Did they consider us and all those to come? Generations who will never catch a salmon fresh from Celilo Falls. Before Lillian left our class, she shared one more thing. A debate had gone on for years about whether or not the falls were still there beneath the reservoir. Some thought the army had blown it up with dynamite before the dam was finished, but nobody was sure. To end the debate once and for all, the Army Corps of Engineers took a boat out to create an image of the bottom of the lake with a sonogram. To everyone's surprise, the sonogram revealed a clear image of Celilo Falls. The rocks and boulders still lodged in place with a strong current flowing over the top of them. Petroglyphs still adorn the gorge walls, completely protected by water. I'd like to think they were ready to emerge again and share the story of the river people. After Lillian's visit, we decided to drive to Celilo Park, the site where the falls once flowed. As our bus wound its way through the gorge, we passed the Dalles Dam, a massive gray cement structure with water pulsing from its pipes. We parked and walked onto the shoreline. Celilo Lake stretched out across the gorge to Washington State. The air was still and quiet. It felt like something was missing. I picked up a rock and skipped it out across the flat water. As it sunk to the bottom, I imagined Celilo Falls flowing just beneath the surface. The people of the river lived and fished at Celilo Falls for 12,000 years. When the dam opened, it only took one hour for all that to disappear. If we took the dam down, how long would it take for the falls to come back? How long would it take for the people to return to their homes alongside the river? It's kind of a dream we have. For now, the falls can still be found in our hearts and minds and stories. And hopefully, if enough people realize what was lost, we can change. And places like Celilo Falls will emerge again.